Welcome to I Rise Conversations with Joan. My name is Joan Wasu, and I'm the award-winning author of the book I Rise: The Ten Secrets to Getting Up When Life Knocks You Down. Today we're going to talk about parents. Parents play a huge role in how our lives are shaped. Parents are the first heroes, or at least they should be. So the absence or the outright rejection can be very traumatizing for people. Growing up with that feeling of loss of a parent, even though they're alive, but they're just not in your life. Or sometimes you might even feel blame, like maybe they left because of me, or maybe I'm just not worthy. Well, all of that is adversity that plagues a lot, a lot of people, myself included. We've all gone through many forms of trauma through the course of our lives. And yes, we all handle it differently and it has different impacts on our lives. But there are some beliefs that really hold men back that makes this adversity impact men more. Some of those beliefs are deeply entrenched in men. So now they're not able to confront their trauma or to heal in a vulnerable way. Today, we'll explore some of the ways that we, everyone, can overcome adversity to have a more fulfilling life. Our guest today is L.T. Bourne. He is a speaker and an author whose professional career began in 2019 after his first book, It's Not a Man's World, where he reveals what it's like for a male growing up in a fatherless household. He discovered in his early 20s his gift of inspiration and leadership. He founded Open Thought, which is a nonprofit organization created for youth development in the Tox and Caicos, beautiful island, to give the youths a voice and an outlet to express themselves. He's passionate about problem solving, collaboration, and engaging young people in fighting the common threats in their environment today, such as violence, poverty, and abuse. He shares his vision of a united community that uses love, open thinking, and commitment to make a difference, a world where everyone can live a more fulfilling life. Welcome, LT, to the show. Joan, it's a pleasure to be on iRise. I just want to thank you for extending this invite and also uh, engaging a topic that's uh, really explored in our communities, you know. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the conversation. And as my bio stated, I'm an open book, so you can ask me anything. And yeah, let's just dive awesome. into it. Awesome. I can't <laughs> wait. Okay, so let's talk about your life growing up. What was it like growing up without a father? It was very uh, confusing, challenging, you know. Um, seeing my mother work so hard in her early years, you know, and her not being there during times when I wanted her to be there for me, you know, a woman provides, you know, emotional support. Um, this is where we as men learn emotional intelligence, empathy, um, compassion. And she wasn't there um, enough to teach me some of these things, you know, because she was playing both roles, you know, when she comes home, from work, she's tired, you know, so she didn't engage me as much as she should have. But I was fortunate to have my grandmother in the house who um, also assisted. And um, it, it was a generational thing too, because my grandmother also um, was a single parent mom. So, um, you know, my grandmother is the same way where she's a workaholic um, and really engaging me the way a woman should engage a child. And then that's that's just from the mother's side. Let's talk about the father now. Um, I grew up, I was very intelligent as a child and um, watching TV and seeing uh, uh, two parent households. Cause you know, television, they're not gonna um, um, portray a single parent household on TV. So you grow up and you watching a lot of TV, because you know, as a child, your parents still you in front of the TV because they want to, you know, get you out of the way or, you know. Um, so I'm watching all this television and I'm noticing, you know, father, this father, that seeing children engage their father. And I'm sitting there like, where, where's my father? You know, why, why, well, why isn't my father involved? And, you know, and, and um, you know, it was, it was, it was challenging because, you know, you, you kind of feel like what's wrong with me? And, and what did I do? And, you know, you, you carry that insecurity, you carry that pain too, because you, you want to have somebody as a male to teach you 
which you saw the other uh, male fathers was teaching there. Yeah, one of my favorite shows um, was the Cosby Show and also Family Matters, um, um, and also the Fresh Prince with Will Smith. Yeah. Um, so um, seeing how those fathers interacted um, with um, their boys, you know, it was it was kind of defeating for me, mm -hmm. and um, I think what what made a difference for me was. I, I had an Uncle Phil, and my Uncle Phil was my Uncle Warren, mm -hmm. and he he would stop in every week, and he would check on me, he would ask me questions, he would show me things about manhood, and he would drop these little gems now and again about manhood, and so he he played a, a, a great role in, in, in stepping in and being um, that father figure for me, and I, I, I always tell him I owe so much of who I am today um towards him um, especially my passion for media and television because he um was into media and television a lot um so he gave me that passion and you know as as a father or even as a mentor even as an uncle you never know how you're inspiring the next generation and i am what i am today and my passions are what they are today because well some of my passions because what i saw he was passionate about. I'm like, man, you're passionate about TV. I want to get into yeah. TV too. And I just want to say this. I, um, two of my creative film projects was recently nominated for a local film festival. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to be presenting my films next week. The, the festival is next week. Um, and, and he played a role in that, you know, um, me being inside of film, um, I'm, I'm, man, God has been good, man. Regardless of my adversities, God has been good. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you for sharing that and congrats on your nomination. Oh, thank you. So you mentioned about, yeah, and this is a very sensitive topic because I do know a lot of single mothers and people who grew up in a single mother home. For me, it was different. My parents were just divorced, and but they divorced when I was eight years old. So I felt the absence of my father being around for a while. But for single mothers who are raising children and there's no father figure, how important is it? Can they do it all? Because you said your mom and your grandmother played both roles is it possible for one parent to play both roles in a child's life um, um if you have uh um it's you you now how how do i say how can i say this it's a because concept. i don't <laughs> no, because I don't want to discourage mothers, and that's on my mind too. Because you have some phenomenal mothers, including my mother, um, very, very hardworking. However, if you focus on um, you, we, if you, you can fulfill the roles of both a mother and a father. Um, you can't. Um, if you start to do the fatherly stuff, you're going to neglect the motherly stuff. If, if you focus too much on the motherly stuff, you'll forget the fatherly stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what I saw with my mother. You know, she was solely focused on being the provider, being the strong woman who had to be a disciplinary for her son, where I never saw the compassionate side of her. Mm -hmm. the, 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 she always had to be stern and, and yeah. strong and don't let this boy run over me. <laughs> you know, um, so I never saw the soft side of my mom. I saw the soft side of my mother when she married later on in her life. Okay. And she would marry my stepfather later on in her life. And now some, some people might be thinking, well, Leonardo or Lee, well, that's my, my real name. Um, some people might be listening in and saying, well, how can you say you grew up fatherless? Well, when my mother married later on in her life, she went and lived with her husband and left me with my grandmother. Oh. So I was still growing up in a single parent household. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's to clarify that. So, um, but just to go back to your question, when you, when you mentioned about women, when I saw my mother marry my stepfather, years later, she became very soft and caring and empathetic. I'm like, this is what I needed in my formative years, <laughs> you know, exactly. I didn't, you know, but it, it just shows the pressure he took off of her. Yeah. Um, and that allowed her to be more of a woman. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what I needed. I needed my mother in that state. And I, and I never got her in my, in my formative years in that state. She always was strong. She always had this, I'm not going to play with this boy demeanor, simply because you're playing both roles of mother. Yeah. And, and, and when you see that a lot with single parent mothers, they are very stern. They're very strong. They're very yeah. not smiley because they have to be that for their sons. Yeah. you know and their children because they can't let those children run over them mm-hmm. and it's no fault to them you know it's just them being good parents however there are developmental uh, issues that occur when they're not tapping into that feminine nature mm-hmm. I-, I agree and again you know it doesn't mean that they're not great mothers they're great mothers they're doing the best that they can but trying to play both roles exceptionally well is very difficult almost very impossible very difficult. Mm-hmm. and just like you said you start playing the the role of the father you start missing out on the role of the mother or there's no balance you overcompensate there's just many things that go with not having one parent in the household and I love your story about you had an uncle Phil you had an uncle <laughs> that was there for you that you could look up to so mm-hmm. even for single mothers who have uh, milk children maybe find an uncle, maybe your brother or a, a neighbor, someone, a fatherly figure that can help to teach the man how to be a man. Mm-hmm. Because I know even from being in relationships, I don't get men. For me, women are simple. We're easy to understand. You men, mm, don't know. Can't <laughs> figure you out. So I, I think it's just finding finding that balance and making sure that your children have the best of both. Um, male and female to help them to to form in in that early years in their formative years okay so you went through all of this um challenges in your life being from a single parent home how were you able to find your purpose out of that experience and why is it so important for you to share your story now wow that's that's a loaded one how was i able to find my purpose i think my purpose found me Hmm. um my purpose came from uh my life experiences um there was two events that occurred um the first one was the death of my god brother and uh it was 2001 and you know i was about 20 years old he dies and that was a real reality check for me because me and his relationship was very strong he was telling me that same year that he was he was preparing to go to university because he had a passion for architecture. Like he used to share his drawings all the time. And so when he dies, like it's like a wake up call for me because at that time, man, I'm 20 years old. I want to party. I want to turn up. You know, I want to live chop life. Like I, I just want to have, you know, fun. And he dies and I'm like, yo, life is short. Life is really short. And seeing him in that casket and my mind was filled with the thought of, Leo, you have to staff it up. You have to level up. You have to go after because he was a go getter. He was going after his dreams. I'm like, I need to do more. I'm not doing enough. Like I'm partying. I'm having all this fun, but I'm not fulfilling, you know, uh, my destiny. And so I would enroll in university the following year to earn my, my, my associate's degree. And during that time, I was making a payment inside the bank, standing in the line. And this pasta, well-known pasta, very popular pasta locally, um, was made a command because he saw me engaging with the tellers and having a, a conversation. He was like, young men don't have these conversations like this wow. anymore. So he, he made it seem as though, you know, um, I was the only one in my community with that level of respect and care. And I got offended because I knew a lot of men like that. And I got home that it was it was weighing on my mind so much. I called my boys and I told them, listen, we got to do something to change the narrative of young men in this country, because there's a lot of us here. You know, I just feel like we just focus so much on the negative that we neglect the positive males out here. And so that that propelled me to launch the platform um, Open Thought. And um, Open Thought would, would uh, go on to do uh, talk shows, radio shows. We did summer camps. Um, we did school tours. Um, and we did that for two years. And then the government um, would give all of the guys scholarships. So we got an opportunity to go off. Yes, it's a lot. Go off and study um, our, our, our passions. Um, um, we, um, I have a guy that, that studied law, completed his degree. Uh, marketing and management, and I would go on to study psychology. Um, 
So I we do that, come back home. And, you know, um, I was unemployed for a period because, you know, psychology degrees in my country, you know, we don't want to talk about our issues that much. Be a lawyer, and, doctor, or engineer. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, we, uh, I would come home and have this period of, of, um, of unemployment and I'm, th- I'm looking around my community. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of fatherless homes here. You know, I never noticed it prior to going, but I'm like, based on my psychology degree, this is causing a lot of social issues. You know, so I I, I started journaling about my experiences and probably two, three months into journaling, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to turn this into a book. Wow. And I turned my journal notes into a book and I and I and I said it's not a man's world because the world that I was raised in was predominantly women you know and um it's no it's not to say that men aren't here it's just that men aren't stepping into the rules or they don't know the importance of being in the world you're in the world but you're not in the world you don't know the importance of being in this child's world and so that that book was to uh you know, talk about my adversities, but also uh, get to a place of forgiving my father, um, who I have never, who I only met once in my life. Um, And it was 20 plus years of me um, having no contact with him. I published this book. And at the end of the book was the chapter forgiveness, where I just came, well, I just forgave him. I forgave him for everything. I, I, I put myself in his shoes and I'm like, listen, if my father came from a culture where, you know, um, being actively involved in your child's life was, you know, uh, praised. And if you're not involved in your child's life, you were outcast, you know, he would have been involved in my life. My, my father's environment created him, you know, and I looked at it later, I'm like, okay, it's not my father, it's my it's the environment that we have to change, you know, and um, that's how I was able to forgive him and, you know, forgiving him and getting that release opened up so many doors and avenues for me um, to uh, go on um, radio show. I'd have a radio show here now and um, I am actively involved in a mentorship program at a youth, youth center. Um, so it, it, it opened up a lot of doors for me, but what, what it also did was reconnected me with my father's family. So now I, they would reach out to me I would, and we would start conversating. And uh, this is the first time 20 plus years that we had no form of contact. And, you know, it was, it was, it was so beautiful to, you know, to see people, um, who I can, oh, wow, that, that, he looks like me, or he gives, <laughs> you know, you know, it was, it was very cool to see that um, yeah. from, uh, from them, and um, to also, and I would meet my father, I just met my father last year for the first time as well, wow. um, so oh, me, me forgiving, me, me, me with the intent of forgiveness, allow me to um, reconnect with my father and it's not it's not a fairy tale story where we reconnected and now it's constant communication because he's still he's still uh, not involved in the way I would like him to be involved however it's work in progress it's much better than it was 20 years ago and you know you ha- you have to just be patient with people you know and and understand that they they're also battling their traumas and their uh, misbeliefs and and their environment uh, that shaped them and 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 some and things like that you can't uh, overcome in one encounter. Things like that takes uh, deliberate a- action and 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 also uh, patience, you know. And I'm I'm pretty sure in the next ten years, me and my father's relationship will be much more healthier. Um, however, I'm not focused on the ten years. I'm just fo- taking it one day at a time. And I'm so grateful to have met him and to have you know, had a conversation with him and to have hugged him as well, you know, um, um, it made it all worth it in, in the end to put my story out there and be vulnerable. Yes, I do get those criticisms of, you know, your mother did so much for you and this, that, and the other, and um, you're not loyal. You're, you're ma- yeah, and you're making men look weak by talking about this. I do get that, but my mental 
peace or my my state of mind is much much better now you know you you're calling me weak but i feel so strong now so i mean your perception is not my reality i i i wake up and i feel love in my heart back in the day i used to wake up and feel a lot of anger you know i don't i don't wake up in that state anymore i wake up in a, in a state of gratitude and I, I will choose this life over the, the old life that I have. You know, um, I, I, I have no regrets about putting my story out there. I have no regrets about being vulnerable with my manhood because it's made me more relatable and it's, it's, it's connected me with so many beautiful people, including um, you, June. Um, so I, I, am, I, am, I am grateful that God has given me the opportunity and the strength to fulfill this leg of my journey. I'm so happy that he he put this in my heart, and uh, I I can't wait to give him a hug when I when I get <laughs> to heaven. <laughs> That's so awesome. Your story is so phenomenal. It's so inspiring. Yeah. And you touched on so many things. And honestly, like even with your with your co- with your non for profit organization, within two years you're already getting scholarships from the government to go study. I think that's just. It's just amazing. But I like how your life has unfolded where everything that's happened to you was for a reason. It was all yeah. leading to somewhere mm-hmm. and how you, you came back, you started journaling, it became a book. And I think that from there, you know, the last chapter on, on, on forgiveness, I think is so key. I think mm-hmm. a lot of men, we've talked about that the environment mm-hmm. makes it very, very difficult for mm-hmm. them to release that anger within them and they carry it on it holds you back but they don't see it as it's holding that like, no 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 he doesn't deserve my time he doesn't I don't want to know him he's this good for nothing all of that but you're telling us today that you just forgiven your your father first of all it frees you but then it's opened so many doors you've just been, gone on to do so much with your life to inspire so many other people so let's I, talk I, to- I, and I want to touch on hold that question yeah I want to touch on so you said I don't want to, and I don't want to, and this, your, your ego is protecting you when you, we, as a man, when you say that, and you have to understand, it's not about you. It's about the next generation. It's about your children that you're, you're going to raise. It's about your lover that you're connecting with. It's about the people in your, in your, in your, in your work environment that you're interacting daily. You not engaging your traumas is affecting everybody in your life. So at the end of the day, it's not about, I don't want it. I, it's about how you're impacting everybody around you and, and future generations. It's yeah. not about you. It's not about you. It's about, it's about the, the seeds you're watering and the, and, the, and the people around you in the next generation. It's never about you. Okay. So we might have people who are listening today who have that and strange uh, relationship with their fathers. They've never seen their father, never been their fathers. There's so much anger. Cause I know what it feels like to wake up just angry at someone. Bradman mm-hmm. probably doesn't even know you're angry, but you're just there. It's just eating you up. How can they get started on that journey to forgiveness? And I want you to talk about how you said you looked at it differently. And it, what you said, it's not your father's fault. He's a result of the environment where he's lived, yeah. where he grew up. Yeah. So how can people start get started on that journey of forgiveness? Uh, one of the things, one of the books that I read um, early in my career, well, while I was in university, was The Four Agreements. And one of the one I, I uh, one of the agreements, um, I can't remember the author name right now, uh, but one of the agreements was to not take anything personal. And I think that's what we need to get to as men. You know, we, we take a lot of things personal. And again, that, that's, that, that spans or that comes from the ego. You know, the ego is always trying to um, um, inflate itself and trying to protect itself. Mm-hmm. And once we get to that state where we, we're not taking things personal and, and we're actually looking at it from the other person's perspective, okay, she said this about me, or he did this to me. Why? It's because of some pain they're carrying. It's because of environmental factors. It's because of the beliefs they have. That Those things have absolutely nothing to do with you. Everything that I just mentioned has everything to do with that person. So it's the person that has issues that they haven't resolved. And as a human being, we have to uh, get to that state of compassion for people. 
you know, um, you, you, you set your barriers, yes, but you have to understand that people act and, and, and behave the way that they are uh, uh, based on the way that they were raised. It's, they're not acting and behave in, to really hurt you. It's just the fact that they've gone through so much and they've, they've been raised a certain type of way that this is the way they respond, they respond to certain situations and certain people. You know, hurt people, hurt people. You know, that, that's, that's where it all comes from. You know, and once you realize that this individual is hurting, you start to say, you know, why is he hurting? And, and why did he behave this way? And I'm, 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 I'm going to say this now. You know, and my theory was absolutely right when I, when I put myself in my father's shoes and, and said, you know, my father was going through something. You know, there's a reason why he neglected me the way that he neglected me. And I learned that by interacting with his side of the family. My father's father died when he was uh, born. And he died because uh, my father is a triplet. So at the time he was a teacher, my, my grandfather was a teacher. And the triplets now was a financial burden on the household. So he would now take a high paying job being a linesman and he would fall off the pole and die um, as a linesman. And so my father never really got to interact with his father. Yeah. So now you're seeing now, right. You're seeing the, the, the generational, uh, uh, cycle uh, uh, or you're seeing now that he never saw the importance of a man being inside a woman's household so he doesn't think it's important for him to be a part of my life and once I realized that I'm like okay I was right and me holding this against him wasn't fair to him you know he just never developed the strength to to overcome that and so this was just his response to thing that I'm going to behave the way that I, that I saw. He never questioned it. You know, uh, 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 Socrates says an, an, un, an unexamined life is a life not worth living. He never examined his life. And, and he never, and when you don't examine your life, you never, you know, uh, you never get to the state that I'm at where you're able to just forgive. I, don't, I think my father still carries that in him to this very day you know he has nine children I, I also learned about by different women so um it's a lot it's a lot and I met I met um, one of the ladies that he has a child with and my brother is struggling with the same thing I struggle with uh, where he wants a relationship with his father but I had to tell him the same thing that I'm telling you our father is hurting mm -hmm. And because he's hurting and because he doesn't want to confront this pain, it's going to take a long time to, to uh, build, to reveal that to him or to, con to, uh, to get him to confront that. And it, it might take more than 10. If it, I told my brother, it might take more than 10 and 15 years because it's something we as men don't do. We have to create that culture for him. We have to create that environment. And that's not an overnight thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's going to take time. And, you know, once I realized that my father was, was hurting and he came from, you know, um, he, he went through those experiences, it made it easy for, for, mm -hmm. to forgive him, you know, and it, it was a challenge for me now to say, well, you know, how, how can I help him, you know, and I'm at that stage now where I'm asking that question, how can I help my father, you know, um, he's, he's in pain, he's in some and this is why mental health is important for our communities because you know starting it would allow us to understand people more. Uh, mental health is not this thing we should just um, um, look at. Okay, only crazy people have mental health issues. No, <laughs> yeah. mental health issues, anxiety, depression. These are not create. These are not crazy things. These are um, states that we go through in our human development. And um, you study the Bible, uh, Solomon, King David, they went through um, these stages as well, if you can really analyze uh, those biblical stories. So it's nothing wrong with, you know, going through these states. And I feel like if we engage mental health more, we will begin to uh, have a deeper understanding of people and their reactions and their personalities. 
and that's going to create a stronger community. You know, I, um, it's not natural. It's, it, there's nowhere in the uh, in our existence where this was acceptable. We we got to this state, and the question is, how do we get back to the state? of being um, family oriented, of men, um, real understanding the importance of us sticking together, understanding the economic importance. How is it that um, uh, Black Americans have trillion dollars worth of spending power in the US, but we are at the bottom of everything in the US? How is that? It's because we are not working collectively and as a unit and 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 you you can't do that without the family and when you look at um, our communities in america we uh we have the most single parent households in that country and and, and um if you 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 want to you want to attain economic prosperity yes but you have to attain it the right way and the right way is addressing the family and getting the family to cooperate and, and, and collaborate the way it used to. And until we can rebuild the family and heal the family, we will never attain uh, the right um, economic success the right way and in a way that's sustainable because our successes will be based on us trying to uh, cover up our pains and traumas and not really and truly for the greater good of our community. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we, we have to, rebuild the family and make it a man's and a woman's world, not just a woman's world. We have to make it a world where both of us can coexist. And I, what I see on social media a lot, and which is why I'm slowly um, limiting my time, is just this constant attack of us against males. I mean, a man against women and women against this constant criticism. Like, no, this is not what we need to be doing right now. We need to be understanding how we can work together how we can uh, 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 keep men and a woman together inside the house, not criticizing one another. And this, I've seen that happen on social media. I'm like, man, this is, this is not where we need to be. We need to get to that place of, of healing and of us understanding the importance of being in our children's lives and, and them seeing both a man and a woman in a household. And research says this, that a child growing up in a two-parent household um, fares off better in all areas of this life, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mentally, economically, you know. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. fathers listening in or, or women listening in, um, I think it's important to um, understand men more and, uh, and um, understand that, you know, it's, it's good to ask those questions of, you know, uh, what was your relationship like with your father uh, while you're in a, while you're dating and, and see, you know, um, if, if he has unresolved issues, because that's going to tell you how he's going to behave towards you. Yeah. you know um so i completely it's a lot to unpack yeah, yeah, but, lot to yeah. Unpack, but i completely like i agree oh you said a lot lots lots to unpack but i think you know some of the key takeaways you know that i think people should be thinking about today is how can i help i really love that how can yeah. you help this person because the person is yeah. it is hurting there's a lot of pain it's as simple yeah. as that and i love the the one of the four agreements that you picked which is don't take anything personal because yeah. really it's not about you it's about them they're going through a struggle they're going through a pain and the worst part is if they don't even realize it so now you're just an autopilot you know where what you saw your father do you're going to do your children are going to do you don't even realize you're hurting people all over the place where you don't even realize so rather than get angry or be mad at them it's not doesn't mean that you're not hurting you're hurting too but again, think about it that it might not be their fault. It might be they're only operating from their level of consciousness, what they know. They can't yes. give what they don't know. You mm. have to have it. If you don't have love, you're not giving love. Like if you never saw love growing up, how are you going to give love? And you see the same patterns repeat in your own generation, in your children's generation. It's a pattern. It so is a pattern. To, we have to recognize it, mm. ask the right questions, mm. and break that cycle. You said it so, so well. Yes. Yeah. Break the cycle because it's the same. Like you said, people are tearing themselves down all over the place. There's the feminist, there's good feminism. And then there's just the one that is just downright ugly. 
tearing men down, men tearing men down, or oh, it's a man's world. No, what a man can do, a man can do better. It's this whole one against the other, I think it's so futile. I think there's a reason why two parents are better than one. It is. It, yeah, is it, it, yeah. it has so much benefits, so, yeah. so much benefits. And you know, we can't change our past. Yeah. We can't, but we can we can learn from it. You know, I always allude to the Lion King where Rafiki hits Simba on his head and then Simba says, oh, and Rafiki tries to hit him again and Simba dodges it. And, and, and Rafiki is like, ha you learned. You learned from um, the past. And that's what we have to do now in our communities is, you know, we've gone through this period of single parent households and our, we've gone through, I think, uh, multiple decades of this now. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't think we've learned from it, okay? And that's and that's the, the point of the book is to have people look at the title and say, mm, well, why didn't he say it's not a man's world? Uh-huh. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah. You know, and how did Like the women from- will be happy. Finally, someone said it. <laughs> but it's man's coming, world. it's <laughs> coming from a, it's coming from a male, dude. Why, why is the man saying this? Yeah. You know, and then a man will pick it out. What is this guy talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so it, it, it engages you and I, we need more uh, speakers and more authors and more platforms doing this because I don't think we're learning from our past. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to learn from it in order to move forward. And it goes to that Ghanaian word of Senkofa. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you have to go back and understand how we got to this state in order to move forward. Mm-hmm. You know, and once and once we do that, then we are we are gonna we're gonna look at the black uh, uh, family differently, um, and we're gonna have more compassion and empathy, mm-hmm. and that's gonna also lead to us being more patient with one another. You know, and and that's what we need to get to: patience and love. Love is patient. Love is kind, and and that's solely rooted in understanding and knowledge. That's how love gets to those states. And we have to prioritize that. We have to prioritize understanding our problems. We have to gather the knowledge. We are living in the informational age where you can just Google a lot of things and it's at your fingertips. So we have no excuses. But what we lack is focus. What we lack is that deliberate action. And um, we have to continue to raise awareness. It's not a problem that's, that can't be solved. It's a problem that's not being given enough attention to be solved, uh, but it's a very solvable problem. And if we can work collectively together and have these conversations, have these conferences, um, I'm speaking a lot of things into existence, but um, <laughs> if we can get to that state in our communities, we are we, 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 in, in about 25 to 30 years, we will be looking at a, a completely different generation of um, Afro people globally. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think it's yeah. a collective effort. It's a responsibility of everyone, all of yeah. us. We need to be yeah. working on this together. Yeah. Because now, you know, some people might be listening and saying, well, okay, well, I'll go fix my own relationship with my father, but that's just you. That's just one. What about yeah. other people around you? I bet we all have cousins right. who are suffering from the same. You know, we have younger generations, younger people who are dealing with this single uh, parent homes or even being challenged because, again, the statistics are there. People who grew up without a father figure, they end up in prison more, they commit more crime, they're more delinquent, they, they drop out of school. There's just so much around it. Yeah. So everyone should... It, this is on all of us. We should be mm. responsible for being part of the change. Yes. We have to change the community. Like no one's coming to change it for us. It starts with us. We've seen the pain. Some of us, we've gone through this. We've lived 10, 20, 30, 40 years. We've been through this. We know what it feels like. So now it's the time for us to rise up and really help the younger generation in a, whatever little way we can help that generation not make the same mistakes. And for people who are maybe raising a child on their own women, like now it's not the time to talk bad about men. Oh, your father's good for nothing. He's useless. We don't need a man. Oh, I've done, I've done it all for you. Or get angry when that child starts to look for their father. Oh, you're betraying me. I was the one who was there for you. Where was he all these years? Let's start preaching more of compassion and trying to put yourself in the other person's shoes and try to, they're dealing with demons too. We're all dealing with demons. So rather than just break people down, let's try to help them. 
How can yeah. I help? What is this? Yeah. What what fear? What trauma is this person going through? And we already talked about the environment that doesn't really allow men to face their fears and their trauma. Everyone's busy trying to be macho. Or, right. Don't tell me that. Don't want to talk about my feelings. You can't even get a man to go see a therapist. It's like, I'm not talking to anybody. Take care of my stuff. But again, we have to be vulnerable. We have to be open. That's how you discover what are the childhood traumas that you're dealing with and deal with it. Because if you don't, then it impacts everyone around you. It impacts your children, impacts your colleagues at work. It impacts everybody, you know, people that live around you. So I, I think this is a this is a wake up call for people today. Really, mm. we got it. Yes. And I, and I also want your listeners to understand that not because Joan has done a project on fatherlessness doesn't mean you can't do it too. You know, it's not, it's not a competition. And, and furthermore, June's perspective is completely different from your perspective and your experiences. Mm -hmm. So we also have to get out of the scarce mindset of thinking, okay, if she's doing it, I can't do it. You can, mm -hmm. you, there's, there's a different varieties of, 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 the, the problem that we're facing, you know, June will hit it at this level, you'll hit it at this level, and I will hit it at another level. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't, don't feel like you need to compete with June or that you can't do what she's doing. You can do it at a, a different uh, variation and team up with her, mm -hmm. you know? So we have to get rid of this competitive nature that we have because that's rooted in scarcity. Yeah. Um, there's so much abundance out here um you go outside and you look at uh, i mean just look out your window you can't count the leaves on all those trees there's so much abundance out here and it's the same with uh, but god made this world in abundance so don't ever feel like you you can't do what the other person is mm -hmm. doing it's just god made you different from everybody mm -hmm. it, you're gonna hit it from and this is this is this is um this is uh, proven, proven. Yeah, my, you have two twins, yeah, who will grow up in the same household, have the same experience, but they'll be completely different people. Completely, yeah. You know, so this is proven with, with the twin researchers. So don't ever feel like you can't do what she's doing. You can do it at a different variation or take a different approach because we need that. We need different variations of methods to address this issue, okay? And you, and you have to set that ego aside and set that, uh, 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 that scarce mindset aside mm -hmm. and operate from abundance so that we can really uh, get to solve this issue. Again, this issue is very solvable. And here's why I'm saying this. In America, and uh, there's a recent study that was conducted last year about uh, two parent households um, from the 70s up until 2020. We saw increases in the percentages of every household in America except African American households in regards to two parent households. Yeah. There was an increase. I can actually send you that study uh, when we come off this. I'll send you the study. There was an increase in all households as Af Afro-American households. And, and why you might say that is because we don't have this dialogue enough. Mm -hmm. We don't engage it enough. Um, and until we understand the importance, until we prioritize, again, you said therapy, we have to do that. Um, you can't escape that even if the government, if I hope some government officials is listening in as well, even if the government makes it free, because uh, a lot of times people say, you know, they can't afford it, mm -hmm. you know. So even if the government, you know, for the next decade say, listen, I'm going to take an aggressive approach to mental health in this country and make therapy free for the next 10 years. Let's do that. Yeah. You know, let's have a strategic plan to how we're going to solve single parent households in this country. You know, it's it's a solvable thing, you know, but we we all have to buy into it and we all have to understand that it's bigger than us. I didn't write that book for me. I wrote that book for everybody who's going through what I've been through. Yes. And I, that was the next point I was going to make, because some people might be thinking, oh, well, my story, my st it's not about you. The reason why you went through what you went through is to help somebody else. It is yes. not about you. 
It's your story you. will help change other people's lives. So don't be shy about sharing your story or feeling so ashamed. Or, oh, I don't want to be, uh, you know, I'm an introvert. I don't want people. To... You're missing out on how you can help the someone today or even the future generation. So use your story. Tap into that story. Everybody's story is different. You know, I had a father, but my parents were divorced. So that's why, you know, I ended up living with my mother. But for some people, I have a half sister who never lived with my father. So she had an absentee father all her life. She's not even bearing his last name. So everyone's story is different. If she and I sat together, our stories are completely different. You know, and then and then again, I have brothers who went through the same experience as I did, but we, we handled it differently. They they have a different perspective to how you know the whole divorce played out, panned out in their lives. But again, we have to we have to look in the mirror, we have to face this, and we have to be willing to tell our story. Get that healing that you need. Telling your story is part of the healing. And in my book, mm-hmm. I talked about some of the struggles I had in my life as well. And just talking about it and sharing it with people, you like, I went through that as well. Oh, wow, I didn't know you went through that. Oh my God. And then you get your healing from that too. But I think in general, what we're trying to say is this is a collective effort. This is yes. on us. It's on every single person. Any way, shape or form that you can do it, start. Start today. Don't say, oh, there are they're people doing it already. No, there are people better than me. They're better speakers. No, it's not about whether who can speak better or not. It is who, what impact can you make? Even if it's just one person, start today. If you have nephews, nieces growing up in one parent home, now's the time to start reaching out because they're not, they're seeing what they're seeing. They don't even know it's just happening in their subconscious that will later in life affect them and impact their lives. Now you can start having those conversations with them. You know, start trying to change that, the belief system, the mindset around some of yeah. these things. Because like you said, it will take time for sure. It's not a problem that we can solve today, but I think the government has a role to play. But more importantly, we, all of us individuals, we have a role to play in this too. Powerful. (laughs) So what's next for Open Thought? So I I know you said you do (laughs) one programs, you do all the, you mentioned all the many, many things that you do. Yeah. Where are you taking it to? Well, what's what's the vision? So the vision for Open Thought is to build a regionally recognized youth platform. Um, And then... Hopefully we can branch out globally, um, but right now it's just focusing on the Caribbean and building a platform um, f- by young people for young people. Um, and we've uh, made great strides in the past two years. Um, we recently produced a TV show called Last Get Candid. Um, and that's a TV show that was hosted by Generation Zers. Uh, so you have two women, two women, because they're young, just still young, yeah, they're women. Uh, two women, Generation Zers, talking about their journeys to self discovery, and they're interviewing other women and trying to figure out womanhood. You know, so that's the younger gen. That's that's providing a a, a platform for younger women to uh, express themselves. And then we have uh, another series we're working on called Trailblazing Conversations. And trailblazing conversation is engaging people like yourself who's uh, accomplished great things. And we, we want to understand the trails that, that they, they've traveled and the trails that they want to leave behind. And that's giving our young, the younger generation an opportunity to see, okay, is this the trail that I want to follow? Mm-hmm. Or, uh, uh, or uh, can I take a different route that he took? Because a lot of times as young people, we feel like uh, we are we are inventing the wheel. We're really not. Nothing new is not under right. the sun, you know. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> you know, and uh, I think it, what it will be lack is dialogue. You know, um, we came many generation ago. Storytelling was a part of our tribes. You know, we don't do that anymore. So we have we're to get back. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're on social media. You know, so it's now is now getting back to storytelling and, and getting us to engage the elders and, and, and give, engage the trailblazers who have paved the way. And so, and then of, of course we, we want to do community outreach. And so right now we're working on a national youth forum that we're aiming to have in, uh, in um, September. And that's gonna be a collaborative effort with other youth organizations and the government to have a national youth forum. And then next summer, um, we're gonna aim to have a boys summer camp 
um and uh yeah that's that's where we're at right now but I, i'm always working i'm a workaholic oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh my god um, that is so I, phenomenal so other things may pop up and i and i love collaborating with uh uh like-minded people and people who are passionate about these type of things it makes it a whole lot easier to do the work you know when you when you are collaborating with people who love the work as well so it might be a situation where somebody comes in and, you know, they have a project. I'm like, oh, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I love that. And, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for ways to um, to to spread the message and, and, and give young people an opportunity to have a have a platform, not only when it's in a political times, because that's that seems to be the only time they give us platforms, you know, but. I, I want it to be where, you know, we we as young people have a seat at the table or we can build a table. Um, but it's just given us the opportunity to participate in, in, in the development and, and of the economy and also uh, social life as well, you know. So um, that's the goal. And um, again, for me, it's, it's not instant gratification. It's more so just going through that process and, and understanding that it could be a 10 year thing, could be a 15 year thing and that's fine. But just know that every year there's gonna be some bricks laid and I'm gonna make sure of that. And you know, whenever we get to that, that state of being that regionally recognized uh, youth organization, then I, I would say that's where my legacy is cemented. Wow, that's phenomenal. Yeah. So inspiring, you're doing so yeah. much. You are making a difference. You're making an impact in the world and not just yeah. the youth, everybody who's listening today and all with all the programs that you're doing. Oh my God. I'm hearing movies. I'm hearing shows. I'm hearing forums. I'm here. You're just, you're doing a lot. And yeah. so I just want to say thank you today. We need more people like you who, yeah. again, this is not about you. You're not trying to become a superstar. It's about, you're no. trying to make a change. You're trying no. to make an impact in the lives of the next generation, the people coming, even our generation as well, because I'm still young. Our generation too you're making an impact, but you're also making an impact in the future generation. So thank you very much for everything that you do. So John, any, fin any final words for our listeners today? John, well, I, I just want to thank you for having this platform. And I don't know what led you to this. Uh, I, maybe, maybe I should ask you a question because I didn't ask you a question. So before I say the final words, I want to I understand what led you to creating this platform that you have. So contrary to a lot of people's belief, I was actually a very shy person for a very, very long time. What? I know, right? It's weird. <laughs> but I was a shy person, but not because I was born shy. It was just the environment that I grew up in. Oh, shut up. Why, does I, why do you have to talk? Women don't speak up. So I went into a shell and I was just in that shell for all these years, but I always felt there was something missing inside of me. And so like four years ago, I went through a transformation where I said, I'm going to discover who I am and really, really tap into who I'm meant to be. So I went on that journey. I started to discover things that skills I didn't even know I had. So I started an Instagram live show. just like, and it was just natural to me. And people were like, wow, you're so good at this. I was like, really? People, wow. You know, I was like, wow, this is a way to share my story. I'd already written my book. So I was like, but I want to share more. I want people to learn from other people's experiences. Like you said, people have already blazed the trail. Why do people have to suffer to try to figure things out? Everybody's going through something. If somebody's going through it and has figured out how to resolve it, let's share the story. So that's how we kind of came about where I was just like, you know what? The pandemic, we're all at home. Let's do this. Let me open up a platform where people can come and share their stories, come and inspire people. And again, also give them tips on how to overcome adversity or people who are starting a new business or people who are confused in life, going through a midlife crisis or have mental health issues or struggling with a child who has autism. It's just, I've just had different type of guests and I really love it. I love that there's always a message for somebody and I've gotten a lot of good reviews. You know, people have people who were contemplating suicide, people just so much. And for wow. me, that's what fulfills me. So even though I've done a lot in my life, if people ask me, what makes you happy? And someone did ask me just yesterday, what really makes you happy? And I said, it's doing the show. <laughs> that's I it. Can, I can see that you, it you glow. It, it gives you a glow. <laughs> it it does. gives you, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for you in this platform. And Thank you. It's, this is going to transform a lot of people's lives because you create you create a safe space for for your list uh, for your for your guests. I felt safe. I felt good expressing <laughs> myself. You know, so continue on this this path, this journey, 
And um, I look forward to welcoming you here in the Church of Caicos Island. You know, <laughs> you know, and for your and for your for the viewers and um, the listeners, um, again, don't take it personal. Um, it's bigger than you, yes. and I know that's hard for a lot of people to grasp right now. But don't take it personal. It's bigger than you. Write it down. Stick it on a wall. I guarantee you in three months, you'll realize what I said just now. It's simple. It's not per Don't take it personal. It's bigger than you. Write it down, stick it up on a wall. In about three months to six months, it'll start to make sense to you. That's it. Love it. Don't take it personal. It is bigger than you. Thank you so much, LT, for being here with us. Thank you for all the amazing nuggets, words of wisdom from, you know, you're still young. So for you to have been able to share this. So you've shared so much today. I truly appreciate you. I think you're amazing at what you do. And I really do hope that you continue to do more. You have bigger rich, you go international, you touch more and more lives because we need more people like you really fighting the good fight. Thank, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Okay. And to all my listeners, my amazing listeners, thank you for sticking it out with us today. I hope you did learn a lot. I definitely did. And again, make that commitment today to be part of the solution. Do your bit as much as you can, as little as you can, to make sure that we break that cycle so that we can have a more fulfilling life. Thank you for listening today. I'll see you same time next week on iRise Conversations with Joe.